Condock needed a hero. Instead, they got a podcast. And now, 5,000 years later, I am free. And I give you my word that no one will ever stop me from podcasting again because the geek history lesson on Black Adam is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I am Jason Lightning Bolt Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your Mind University because you have stumbled onto the podcast where we take one character, construct, or Dwayne The Rock Johnson from popular culture and teach you everything you need to know about them in about an hour. And this week we're talking about the character who's going to change the power dynamics of the DC universe, whatever that means, because Black Adam's coming out. Yes, uh, in the most confusing of all movie taglines, it probably it is. It is a look. Look, I'm excited for this Black Adam movie that's coming out. That's the only reason why we're doing this Geek History Lesson podcast, everybody. No spoilers for Black Adam. We haven't seen it yet. But yeah, what, what a confusing tagline. I don't understand. I and, really feel like The Rock was like, I want to be able to say that I am more powerful than Superman. And so marketing was like, uh, we, we can't say that because it is patently untrue. So uh, just uh, change the power dynamics of this universe forever. Let's uh, let's take this little phrase that Dwayne keeps saying and let's put it into an AI program. Hit the button. OK, there are the cinnamons. The hierarchy of the power is going to change. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> You're probably you're probably exactly right. That's probably exactly what happened. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is in honor of the new Black Adam movie. No spoilers again. We haven't seen it. This was requested by a bunch of our listeners. Ashley, if you want to, if they want to request a future episode on some of the other characters that might be in the Black Adam movie, where can they do it? So the best way to do this, the best way to do this, the ones that we always catch are the ones on Twitter, and that is at GHL Podcast. You can also, of course, send your requests to facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson uh, or on Instagram at Geek history lesson there's a bunch of ways to contact us in all of those places but like i said uh twitter is the best it is where we mine the most for our requests this episode was requested by francisco j vargas carrera at nightwing underscore tt and i don't get it usen uh also this episode um you know i could not dive into the world of black adam with some without some help from my society of friends and so there this episode has some amazing additional research and writing by the great Diego Nunez, Woo! our research assistant. So we big shout out to Diego. Thank you, Diego. Let's hop into, uh, by the way, Diego, he is Black Adam Jr. I don't know if you know this. Wow. Yeah, don't tell anybody. Okay. Don't tell anybody. Okay. What color is his uniform? Hmm? Hmm? What color is his uniform? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black. I'm assuming like Captain black. Marvel, they all have different colors. It's black. No, he is in the Black Adam family. It's black. Okay. It's all black, baby. Okay. Sleek and black. Okay. It's a very thinning color. Slimming, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I said what I said. Okay. Dang. Let's get to the 10 cent origin. <laughs> the first part of the podcast where we, uh, by we, I mean Jason, is going to break down all the basics, who's it's and what's it's galores about Black Adam in case you go to a JSA themed cocktail party and someone's like, who is this guy with the pointy ears? Black Adam is, of course, a Fawcett Comics character. Dun, 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 dun. We bought him and shoved him in the JSA. Yes, uh, he was a Fawcett Comics character from 1945, and then he was purchased by DC Comics in 1973. 1973, really? Yep. Yep. Later he, than I would have thought. Yep, uh, with, of course, all the other Marvel yep. Captain Shazam character. Captain Shazam, <laughs> Captain Marvel characters. I mean, characters. honestly, Captain Shazam, not a bad superhero name. It isn't a bad one. <laughs> uh, for his first appearance was in the Marvel Family Number 1 in December of 1945. He was created Created by Otto Binder and C.C. Beck, luminaries yeah. of comic book history. Uh, Otto Binder also later went on to work and do a lot of stuff in the Legion of Superheroes. Yeah, we've talked about Otto Binder quite a bit on uh, the podcast. And C.C. Beck is a name that you will hear every time you you read this. Yeah, but they are they should be on the Mountain of Justice Hall of Fame mm. alongside the Siegel and Schuster boys and Bob Kane and Bill Finger. Mm -hmm. So just throwing it out there. And the Marstons. Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, Black Adam, his alter ego is Teth Adam, Theo Adam, 
and to Thon. And we'll sort of get into the confusing nature of all of those. Sure. His place of origin, of course, is Kandak or Kandak, depending on how you want to say it. Uh, we'll, of course, learn in the upcoming movie how they want to say <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, you can't trust Warner Brothers movies because there's a big difference between Raz Agul and Ray Agul. Yeah. So just depends on what the producers liked the best. At the time. It's fictional. Okay. His team affiliations have been the Injustice League, the Legion of Doom, the Secret Society of Supervillains, the Black Marvel Family. Told you there was one. Monster Society. <laughs> of evil, Injustice Society, Justice League, Justice Society of America, and the Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad. His other aliases have also been the Mighty Atom and Chem Atom. Uh, his abilities are, is that just like Shazam, mm -hmm. he sort of has an acronym powers. This is the only time I'm going to talk about him here because basically Black Adam's powers are the same as Captain Marvel slash Shazam's. He's kind of just Superman with lightning bolts. Great. Got it. But here are the specific abilities. Sure. Ready? Yeah. He has the stamina of shoe, which gives him superhuman stamina and vulnerability in agelessness. Sure. He has the swiftness of Horus, which means that he can run to about super luminal speed. Horus is a bird. He doesn't run. No. The strength. I have notes. <laughs> well, Horus flies. I understand. Speed. The strength of Amon. He has superhuman strength, of course. Mm -hmm. He has the wisdom of Zahuti. Sure. The genius level intellect. And he also has sort of clairvoyance, which is a, a, a tribute that's kind of given to him that is not given to Captain Marvel. Interesting. He has the power of a 10, which is control and emission of magical lightning and thunder. If I may, it's a 10. Oh, did I say it wrong? I just happen to know that specific pronunciation. Okay. Uh, I will badly pronounce a lot of this stuff. And we're and, 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 and it's no big deal and we're doing it. I just again that's one of the ones where mm -hmm. I know how that name is said. Well maybe you know how this next one is said because I've never heard it as well. The courage of Mahan. M E H E N. Uh, I don't know that one. I Mahan? apologize. It is uh he has uh because he has courage, he has immunity to despair and hopelessness, which even though you're gonna learn in this lesson, uh he gets hopelessness a lot. So. Yeah, the trailer seems to be fairly hopeless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to the meet cute. Which is where we first tell you how we meet it and cute it. And boy, do I hope Jason has a good story for this one. Well, Jason. We're, of course, going to start with our research assistant, Diego. Oh, I apologize. I hope Diego has a good story. Diego Ashley said, doesn't. <laughs> I always knew him as the character that was the opposite of the hero, like Reverse Flash or Bizarro. And as long as I've known Captain Marvel, I've always known that there was a darker version of him with elf ears. If I may um, pay a compliment to Diego, I think that that opening line is really great. And it sounds like a good essay. <laughs> Look at him. Well, I, we'll the get, opposite of a hero. It's a great line. We'll get to it in a bit, but I'm just going to throw out to the listeners that the GHL Extra this week is about Black Mirror opposite versions of heroes. Ooh, so, Or villain versions of that. So. Foils. Yeah, literary yep. foils. Uh, Ashley, uh, what's your meet cute for Black Adam? I what did you first meet? No. You got to come up with something. Um, <laughs> I have no earthly idea. I don't know if I've ever read a Black Adam story. Um, is There's an Alex Ross painting of him. Yeah. I and... That, Alex Ross has probably painted all the DC this point. That might be the first time that that's the first thing. Did you never read JSA back in the day? The Jeff Johns run? I did, but uh, he's all over that run. He is all over that run, but like I don't know if I met him before that okay. or not. Well, that's, um, that's a fair answer, though. Black Adam to me was always like, oh, the less cool version of a Namor design. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even though I know he Namor, pre -door, Namor he pre came he pre -dates Namor. later, but yeah, I yeah. think Namor is like a more. It's just the ears and the eyebrows. Uh -huh. Um. Yeah, my my knowledge of Black Adam is incredibly limited. Right. Uh, is he interested like the animated series? No. Then I got nothing. Probably no. that Alex Ross. Baby. Yeah, he's in a couple of the DC animated movies. Uh, that's true. Can I so. tell you my favorite thing about Alex Ross on Twitter is he just retweets his old paintings. I love it. Okay. Jason, what's your meet cute for Teth Adam? Which the, I actually think is a way cooler name than Black Adam. Yeah. Uh, so. There is a series from the 90s. I have talked about it on this series before. Spawn! Well, yeah, I have talked about Spawn. Quite a bit. <laughs> but there is a series, and I think it is must read for any Captain Marvel stuff. And they're finally reprinting it. It's a series called The Power of Shazam. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's Jerry Ordway's masterful Shazam series. That is where I, for it's sort of him sort of retconning and smoothing over and making things and black adam is in there 
Um, and that was where I first learned of uh, the great Black Adam. Mm. And that, of course, is where I first learned about the great Talkie Tony. Oh, wow. Old pullback character. Didn't know if you were going to pull that back out. I, no, probably not. That's going to be the only fear. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hard voice to do. Anyways, all right. right, let's. <laughs> before we get into the History 101, there is a little bit of a prelude. Um because we got to talk about the Fawcett comics period. Of it all, yeah. Of Black Adam. We're not going to talk much about Fawcett comics, but Black Adam appeared once in the Fawcett comics run. Wow. Once. Wow. Ashley, do you know anything about Fawcett comics? I know that that's where Shazam comes from. Okay. And then DC, but no, I know very little about so Fawcett. So, Fawcett Comics was a division of Fawcett Publications. It sure. is one of several very successful comic book publishers during the golden age of comic books in the 1940s. Its most popular character was Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. There was a period of time in yes, the late this. 40s, early 50s that Fawcett Comics outsold DC. Yeah. That Captain Marvel was the best selling comic book on the stands and it beat Superman. Yep. Which is uh, a big reason why DC did everything they could to make Fawcett Comics fail. Yeah, and obviously it worked. And it worked eventually, which eventually DC Comics would go on to purchase their entire back catalog, which is the reason why Captain Marvel and Superman are now in the same universe. Yep. Now, in the... Fawcett Comics version. We're going to sort of get a little bit of his origin here. His origin, which we're going to elaborate way more down the line, has more or less stayed the same. He was a champion chosen by Shazam, mm -hmm. the wizard that gives Billy Batson and Captain Marvel his powers, but then is corrupted by the power. And Shazam, in his disappointment, flings Adam, Shazam the wizard, flings Adam through the farthest reaches of space. I just realized that if I say Shazam too much, you, there's like three people that it could be, so I better be very specific. The wizard on the Shazam. Oh, this lesson's going to be hard, everybody. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so Shazam the wizard yeah. throws Adam, Black Adam, yeah. not, you know, Adam Conover or anything like that. Black there Adam. Adam Conover into space. Into space. <laughs> Black Adam spins. Did you know? <laughs> Adam, uh, <laughs> Black Adam, not Adam Conover, <laughs> spins almost 5,000 years to fly back to Earth, arriving just in time, conveniently, to face off with the new Shazam and the new Captain Marvel family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, since they were all equal in strength, because they all have the same power from Shazam the Wizard, yeah. the fight is a stalemate. The Marvel family changed their tactics, and they decided to trick Black Adam into saying the word Shazam. Yep. They accomplished this by having their uncle Dudley say the word incorrectly. Black Adam foolishly, and also because he's arrogant, corrects him. Black Adam then reverts back to Teth Adam when he says Shazam, his mortal being, and 5,000 years of aging catches up to him in an instant and he dies. Cool. Yeah. The end. Great lesson. Yeah, shortest geek history lesson on uh, on note. But Black Adam then was resurrected thirty years later during the Bronze Age when DC Comics had the property because they said we cannot we cannot leave this villain on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And he only had a couple appearances until Crisis on Infinite Earths. So now let's get into the biographical, the actual geek history lesson of it will of Black Adam. Uh, we're gonna dive deep into Black Adam. And we just want to tell you again, this week's Geek History Lesson Extra on Patreon is the best Black Mirror comic villains because that's what Black Adam is. He's a Black Mirror version of Captain Marvel. So if you want to hear that, you want to head over to patreon.com slash Jawin, that's J-A-W-I-I-N, hear that podcast and also get more podcasts like Jason and Jeremy John about Justice League, where we review every episode of the Justice League animated series. So you'll get four bonus episodes of GHL Extra a month. You'll get some Marvel Club episodes. We just put up uh, our Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Marvel Club episode. Ooh. And you can get ad-free episodes of Geek History Lesson. And don't and everybody, we also want to tell you, kind of fits in, you know, Black Adam is part of sort of the Marvel family. And this is the final month of Marvel Club. Mm -hmm. This is your last chance to go over to the Patreon at patreon.com slash John and sign up for a special offer to get that Sarah Louver print that completes the tri-image art print of Doctor Strange, Thor, and Spidey. And this is Miles Morales Spidey, so it's rad Spidey. So if you sign up over on the Patreon at Marvel Love. Uh, Marvel Club level or higher, you're going to get that. Check it out at patreon.com slash Jawin, and we want to thank all the super friends that support this podcast over there. Okay. Let's talk about Teth Adam. Okay. He was born in 1279 BC. He was the BCE. son. Yes. Yes. To our, to our Commonwealth listeners. Yes. No, not to our Commonwealth listeners. Look, <laughs> 
to our Smarty Pants Commonwealth listeners, okay? <laughs> he was the son of the Egyptian pharaoh Ramses II. Teth grew up to serve as a high priest for Ramses and served him well. And he made many accomplishments, which caught the attention of the wizard Shazam. Because while serving as high priest to Ramses II, the wizard Shazam sought a successor to his godly powers. So even back then, Shazam was like, yeah, I think I'm going to go into retirement. Mm -hmm. Shazam was impressed with Teth for his virtue and his heroism. And he was the obvious choice for the wizard to bestow his godly powers. And so he did. And Teth served as Egypt's champion for many centuries as the mighty Atom. And over the years, he served alongside Prince Khufu, mm -hmm. who was an early incarnation of a Hawkman. And he also worked alongside Naboo the Wise, a.k.a. the future voice in the helmet of Dr. Fate from last week's episode. Mm, Khufu, fun fact, is the pharaoh to whom the largest of the three pyramids of Giza is the tomb of. There you go. Now, Teth Adam slash the Mighty Adam served the Egyptian pharaoh as his champion for many years. And at one point, there was a time-traveling adventure of the Justice Society of America, which showed him in service to Prince Khufu, as I said, with the wizard Naboo. Now, this service drew him away from his family in the home country of Kandak, which was attacked in his absence, and it resulted in the murder of his family and the devastation of his homeland. This attack was carried out by a rogue priest who used the Orb of Ra, anyone that's watched Stargate knows what that is, to give himself metamorpho-like powers. Uh, with the assistance of the time-traveling members of the Justice Society of America, which is basically the goal today is Justice League, the two villains were eventually defeated, and Captain Marvel, uh, Billy Batson, interacted with his predecessor prior to his fall from grace and was impressed by the valor and nobility of past Black Adam. Mm. And at the same time, he was also disturbed in giving a preview of the bloody vengeance that would carry over in Black Adam's life when Black Adam, Teth Adam, murdered the murderer of his family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Saw his revenge. Mm -hmm. Now, after this adventure, unbeknownst to Teth or to Shazam the wizard, Blaze, who is a half demonic daughter of the wizard Shazam. Great. Uh, got decided to take an interest in old Teth Adams. Like, oh, I like the cut of his, uh, you know, his little, his little pointy Egyptian <laughs> chin <Yours>. piece. <laughs> Uh, because of this, Adam becomes corrupted by the power of Blaze. He is seduced by a mysterious woman who was Blaze in disguise, and eventually she becomes the devil in his pointy ears, convincing him that the two of them should rule Egypt together. So Adam kills the pharaoh and declares himself ruler. When the wizard Shazam learns of this, he labels the mighty Adam as Black Adam. That is where the name is born. If I may. Yes. I do find it a tad on the nose that a character named Adam is corrupted by a woman and that that is his origin story. <laughs> tropes on tropes on tropes on tropes. It's comics. I will say that this origin of Blaze, mm -hmm. I believe, I don't know 100%, is a retcon. I believe because so. Because I think this was the start of them saying at DC Comics that we don't want to make him full evil. We Wild, need, yeah. We need to make him an anti-hero. So we need to complain, we need to create a scenario where he was corrupted. I not understand. not that he turned evil himself. I understand, but I'm like, Adam and Eve, really? I agree. I agree. <laughs> so the Wizard Shazam strips Teth Adam of his powers and encases him in a mystical scarab. Teth's depowered body starts to rapidly age and withers into a dried cadaver. The wizard Shazam buries the body and scarab in the tomb of Ramses II. And the wizard, because of this incident, shied away from picking another successor for eons until he eventually in the 20th century met the young Billy Batson. Mm. Uh, in the late 20th century, there was an expedition financed by the Savannah Foundation, which is a name that should be very familiar to Shazam fans, to excavate the tomb of Ramses II. Mr. C.C. Batson and his <laughs> wife, Marilyn, uh, <laughs> and their assistant, Theo Adam. Ah, uh, I see. We're on an expedition to, you know, excavate this tomb. Theo finds a secret passageway that leads the discovery of Teth Adam's tomb. Mm -hmm. When Theo first sees Adam's scarab, he is completely enamored with it 
And because of this, he kills both of the Batsons so that he can steal it and have everything in there for himself. He leaves Egypt with the scarab and he makes his way back to America. Now, this also is the secret origin of Shazam slash Captain Marvel, which we also talked about in GHL episode number 249. So if you want to go check that out, go check that out. Yeah. So this forces the wizard Shazam to have to immediately choose a successor because he knows that Theo Adam is out there with a scarab and could become the Black Adam at any time. He chooses Billy Batson. When he chooses an actual child. He, uses, <laughs> he chooses a 12-year-old. Probably not the best choice. Following in Batman's points of yep. saying, this child seems capable. When Theo sees Captain Marvel for the first time, he is stunned because Captain Marvel looks identical to C.C. Bats and his father. And again, we've talked about this mm-hmm. in the previous G-Shell that uh, Captain Marvel Shazam, when he when he embiggens, yeah. he is basically a grown-up version of himself and he looks like his father. Yeah. So, Theo draws a connection based on the lightning insignia on Captain Marvel's chest to the one decorated on Kem Adams' tomb. Theo then realizes that he must be a reincarnation of Teth Adam. And he takes hold of the scarab, says the magic word, and he turns into Black Adam. The two battle, and the big red cheese, a.k.a. Shazam, a.k.a. Captain Marvel, manages to take the scarab away from Theo, take him into custody to bring forth the wizard to take control of this evil villain. Now... For all intents and purposes, Black Adam is a pretty blank canvas Silver Age character until Jerry Ordway gets his hands on him in The Power of Shazam. Uh, Him and Jeff Johns in the Justice Society of America run Mm -hmm. in the late 90s, early 2000s, took advantage that this character literally had no backstory and no character development and basically created a story that went back 40 years. It is, I guarantee you, the story that the movie is going to draw from. Okay. Um, so it created a lot of clean history for the character. So I want to ask you, Ashley, this yes. is kind of off the top of your head. Yes. Are there any characters in DC Comics that you would like to see the same treatment that like don't really have a lot of backstory, don't have a lot of history. There may be a character that's been around a long time that you'd be like, you know, it'd be nice to like maybe get a blank slate or motivations on this character that really hasn't had anything too in depth. That's a really hard question because and I'm putting you on the spot right now. So um, I need an answer immediately because this is something that you and I talk about a lot, particularly during the Silver Age, particularly with mm-hmm. supporting characters or villains um, who are utilitarian characters. Mm-hmm. They serve a very specific purpose and then they're done and you kind of wash, rinse and repeat with them. Um, that's a really hard question. Uh, like I want to make a joke and be like, ha ha ha, like Skeets or Keelix or like whatever, whatever, whatever. Or like somebody from the fourth world, because the fourth world simultaneously has like so much backstory Mm -hmm. on some characters and then like absolutely none on anyone else. There are some Amazons I would like to see get a little more actual character development Mm -hmm. um uh like artemis and philippus i think a really good writer could come in and do a solo story with them and give them a lot of um a lot of depth and a lot of interest this is something that jeff johns actually really excels at it's something that he really brought to like the green lantern universe Mm -hmm. um and made a lot of those characters really enriched and deep and interesting um Man, this is so. That's fine. You don't have to have an answer. I don't know if there's anyone that comes to mind for me immediately. I'm sorry. It's a very. It's a. It is a very hard question. Hard question. It's a very hard question. I will say this. I would love if if there if someone listening to this is like screaming at their iPhone because something is coming to mind for them. Tweet us at GHL Podcast. I would love to know what character people want to see more about. Now let's talk, Ashley. We're going to reveal the true identity of Black Adam because there is some uncertainty. Now let's talk about Black Adam's true persona. Is he truly Theo or Teth? Now Black Adam claims that he is Teth Adam and that Theo is a separate personality, kind of similar to Billy Batson and Captain Marvel. Uh, Black Adam claims that Theo is more or less his dark side that influences him to be more hostile and dangerous. Black Adam proves this 
by putting himself on trial for the murders of the Batsons. And it is revealed that his fingerprints do not match Theo Adams' fingerprints. Wait, what? Yeah. It's a different body, Ashley. I mean, yeah, but okay. Yeah. It's just like Captain Marvel. But the problem that happens here is that here is the problem is that the and I uh, and with all respect to Mr. Jerry Ordway and Mr. Jeff Johns, I do think that they should have changed this. But the problem here is, is that Black Adam is an Egyptian man named Teth Adam. Yes, I understand. That is the guy that becomes Black Adam. Yeah. The original Black yeah. Adam. But you have to assume that when the wizard gave him his powers mm -hmm. back in the Egyptian times, yeah. that he also changed bodies. Mm -hmm. It was a body flip, mm -hmm. okay? But now when Black Adam wakes up in the modern day, we're saying that that is Teth Adam, that the Black Adam and, body yeah, is Teth yeah, Adam. Yeah, I understand. And, it's like saying that the Shazam body is Billy Batson. And then- Because he's in another, another body. And yes. then we overcomplicate it as well because the reincarnate, like a descendant yeah. of Teth Adam, yeah. Theo Adam, yeah. is the one who picks up the scarab. and But is also the bad guy. But is also more evil than Black Adam? Yeah. So it's 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 very confusing. My recommendation is, is just to ignore the Theo of it all. Great. Black Adam is Teth, Teth Adam. Adam. I mean, that's what the movie's going to do. To heck with it. It's 100%. 100%. And again, we haven't seen the movie, but I, that's my bet too. Yeah, I, yeah, there's yeah. no, I bet you a million bucks there's no Theo Adam. 100%. Um, I think it's just going to be Teth Adam wakes up. Yeah. Um, so that's my recommendation is that Teth Adam is Black Adam and just forget about that Theo of it all. So... Theo, even though, is supposed to be the evil influence on Black Adam. Black Adam goes on a full assault on the JSA through a barrage of attacks, and he overwhelms the team. Just himself. And again, there's like 20 people in JSA. Including Shazam. Yeah. For a short stint, Black Adam joins Johnny Sorrow in his Justice Society. As it was promised that Johnny would remove a tumor that Black Adam had discovered in his brain. After it was successfully removed, Adam betrays Johnny in an effort to wash away the influence of Theo, and he joins the ranks of the JSA. This is his first stint as a hero, and also, uh, the tumor is also another sort of slight recon to explain, like, this is why Black Adam is good now. Yeah. Are we going to talk about that later and our, no. our opinions on it? Okay. No. About, uh, uh, about whether or not Black Adam is evil. Let's talk about it now. Okay. Black, I mean, well, Black Adam is a look. Well, we all, this is going to be a future discussion, but you know what? I do have a, let's just talk about it. Okay. I do have a question later. It's going to ask you, do you think of, do you think Black Adam is a villain? Because again, he's a morally great character. He isn't really looking for redemption and he isn't really an anti-hero. He's just a character that he has principles that he's like, I believe in this. Don't attack my country. And you know, that's what I do. So like, yeah. I, it, well, to, to which I would respond, is Deathstroke a villain? <sighs> yes. Uh, because to me, like, if that's the same basic character archetype, right? Like, uh, Slade Wilson doesn't go out there with the intent of slaughtering innocents, mm -hmm. but like, he'll take a job. Mm -hmm. Or like, if you cross him or his wife, uh, he'll murderize you. Um, line. And, and yeah. And to me, um, Black Adam is the same thing. And, and Black Adam... Uh, excels because he's a great look mm -hmm. he is cool to look at which is the hallmark of a lot of these yes. early comic book the, villains. Light, the lightning bolt black costume yeah. is an awesome costume yeah like i am gonna go see the black adam movie are you really uh sure okay uh but i just thought you had a busy october i'm sorry oh i i do okay um yeah i mean i mean I, i'm mostly because I'm look, i want to see dr fate i mean i'm looking at it right now and it's and you know you have that massage <laughs> <laughs> and then there's 17 hours of petting intern cab Brago. Uh -huh, uh -huh. uh, there's folding your graphic tees. Uh -huh. uh, All real things I will be doing there, in October. <laughs> there is dusting your Robin action figure uh -huh, collection. Uh -huh. And then there is something about, um, let's see here, making a potion to put a spell on Jason so he compliments you and calls you beautiful on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, you're beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I knew that, actually. Mm. I, what, uh, was I, what was I saying? I just forgot it. Oh, so we were talking about Black Adam. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, so I'll go see Black Adam, but, like, he's not a, he's not a hero. And... Uh, mm. Do you... Let me ask you this. Do you prefer... Would you rather he just be straight-out villainous? Yes, mm. I... Like, do you... Because, like, Black Adam right now in DC Comics, as, as currently published... 
is on the Justice League, which is weird. I think I say this a lot when we talk about these. I have no room for an anti-hero. Yeah. The opposite of a hero is a villain. Mm-hmm. Um, I I really like that uh, comic book creators be standing up for these characters that they loved when they were little boys. And they want in the large part, yeah. this is men doing this. Um, and they want them to be the hero. And or they want and they want other people to back them up and tell their eight year old inner child that yes, Black Adam is cool. Mm-hmm. Um. But for me, like, I don't, I don't like it in the mainstream DC universe, okay. um, in the comics. Universe. Whereas something like, I say this about Harley Quinn a lot. I think it really, I think the hero turn with Harley really works in the animated show. I don't think I accept it as much in the mainstream DC universe, but I just didn't know if you had different feelings about Black Adam. I, for me, my perfect Black Adam is like Dr. Doom. I like. And you love Dr. Doom. I do. I like that. He is a villain, but he is a villain that is only really going to mess with you if you mess with his home country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because if they're if they're all heroes, then who are who do mm-hmm. we who who do we fight? Like, and and, and superhero comic books is predicated on a, it's black and white morality. There's good guys and there's bad guys, yes. right? Uh, that's what I think. But I I like that he is he is the super powerful. This this is the perfect setup for any Black Adam story. Champion of Kendak. Yeah, he's a super powerful despot leader. And mm, my my favorite despot good work. My favorite DC comic storyline. This is the setup for my favorite Black Adam storyline. Great. It's Green Lantern and it's somebody else. They're chasing a villain and they're like da, 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 da. we're almost we almost got him. We almost got him and then boosh, they're just like knocked out of the sky and it's like Black Adam and they're like Black Adam what are you doing here and he's like you have crossed the borders of Kandak. Oh yeah. yeah and you're yeah. just like uh oh, you know, <laughs> like that's my favorite setup for yeah, like yeah. every Black Adam story. Like it's like they accidentally went over, like somehow they just accidentally flew over the airspace. <laughs> I love that your preferred version of Black Adam is get off my lawn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is like an absolutely ancient old man yeah. being like, uh, what are the youths up to? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like your magic rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will change the hierarchy of your powers. Okay. Oh, your favorite line. Yep. So Black Adam is granted a membership into the JSA on a probation period after their battle with a Thanagarian demon called the Senator. The demon purges the evil influence of Theo Adam, and now Black Adam is only Teth Adam, or as some people would call, a retcon. (laughs) This also prompts Captain Marvel slash Shazam, depending on what you want to call him, to become a full-time member of the JSA to keep an eye on Black Adam. And maybe kiss Courtney. Now, eventually, Black Adam becomes discontent with the way the JSA handles themselves. He proclaims them to be ineffectual, and he forms his own team of Northwind, Nemesis, Brainwave, Eclipso, and Atom Smasher, mostly villains, uh, because... Eventually, Adam Smasher, over the time in the JSA, see, Adam Smasher and Black Adam have been having a lot of beers in the JSA Brownstone, and they've been talking about life and philosophy. And, you know, Adam Smasher, you know, he is just, uh, you know, originally he used to be Nuclon. Mm-hmm. Um, he is also, uh, you know, a member, he used to be a member of Infinity Inc. He's a guy that grows big, just like Giant Man. Mm-hmm. He's a very simple boy. And he's hearing all these <laughs> philosophies of Black, you know, Black Adam saying, well, it should be an eye for an eye. If you are a thief, I should cut off your hand. If you are a villain that blows up a country, I should blow up your country. And Adam Smasher goes, you know, you, you're on to something here. I like this. I like, Also, I like your old Egyptian brew. This is good <laughs> stuff. Um, the Egyptians didn't invent beer. So, what's that? The ancient Egyptians invent. I don't know if they invented, but they popularized beer. I know. That's why I made the, mil- yeah. that's why I made the joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also aged. See? In ancient caskets. Black Adam has a whole stash. Do you think there's a certain point where even though it's fermented, beer just becomes poison after 5,000 years? I think there's a certain point where beer just becomes water. <laughs> Again. <laughs> it just breaks down into its composite yep. parts of H2O. <laughs> That's what I think. Some scientist is yelling at their iPhone right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we have art degrees. <laughs> so Black Adam has his basically own version of the evil Justice Society with his nice little boy Adam Smasher there. I love that Adam Smasher <laughs> is like, yeah, maybe you're on <laughs> Look, Adam Smasher has a mohawk. He's a simple boy. He has a... You just alienated all of our mohawk listeners. He's got a great costume, though. Oh, uh, here we go. Oh, Uh, yes. I was hoping you would do such a thing. Action figure spotlight. 
Uh, right now in stores, there is an amazing uh, McFarlane Toys Adam Smasher that's in the movie costume. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they made two versions of it, which I think is very funny, although it should be in the same box, I think. They made one version that is like, you know, the seven inch, it's the normal size. Yeah. And then they made one version that's like, I think, 20 inches. So he's big. Like so a he, Barbie doll. So he's bigger than all your other toys. But back in the day, um, I had an oversized Adam Smasher action figure. It was on our YouTube set for a very long time. It was, time. it was. Um, and um, it was an exclusive figure for DC Classics. The last time they did the line of DC Classics, that a great action figure line, The they did a subscription service. And you, if you did the subscription service, you got all these extra figures. So I got an oversized Adam Smasher. It was a great action figure. Um, but I gifted it to my Jason and Jeremy John about Just League podcast. Uh, to Jeremy Skinner because he was trying to complete a JSA. So now it lives in the home of uh, Jeremy Skinner. Now you co-parent Adam Smasher. That's right. So (laughs) we have this sort of evil Justice Society with Adam Smasher. What do you think the first thing they do is? Oh, I was going to pitch names. Um, The first thing they do, I think they go out onto the front lawn of their brownstone and they push the kids off who've been there eating their candies. Mm -hmm. Uh, No. You see, they... They're at this time. Black Adam doesn't control Kondok. Mm-hmm. Do they re? Do they invade and retake Kondok? They invade and retake over Kondok. That's some colonizer nonsense. Because at the time, Kondok has a is a civil war brewing. So with this team, Black Adam and this evil just society destroy the government palaces. They destroy the military, and. Black Adam takes over as the ruler of Kondok. Eep, we hate a political coup. Yep. Uh, <laughs> eventually, the JSA show up. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and Hawkman and Black Adam go head to head in a brutal beating of each other. Oh, I've read this. Yep. Until Adam Smasher, Shazam, and Stargirl step in to call a truce. Yep, 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 yep. Adam Smasher rationalizes to Adam. He goes, what they had to do to free thousands of people was a necessary evil. Um, but the moment that Black Adam tries to threaten and force his will upon the rest of the world, he becomes the oppressive ruler that he just fought against. Yeah, exactly. So a deal is struck that the JSA, because they basically can't beat him, because they can't overcome his hierarchy of power in the DC universe. <laughs> I hate that tagline. <laughs> we have to put it on a t-shirt. Yeah. Um, uh, the hi- probably, the probably, hierarchy of power in the podcast universe. They'll probably knock it off our, our podcast chain. They're pretty uh, difficult about that. Uh, um, fun fact. Well, just let you know, Warner Brothers is, is a beast petty. and very petty about petty. <laughs> knocking anything that is close to their designs out of uh, like a uh, free print print to demand t-shirt yeah, places. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. there you go. That's the whole reason why you can't find a Jason and Jeremy John about justice league, even though there's nothing copyright in that logo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways. So a deal is struck that the JSA will leave black Adam alone. As long as he never sets foot outside the borders of Kondok and Adam smasher stays in Kondok with his patty. This is the... Uh, with his buddy, not his potty. His, his pots, with his... Uh, what do you call it? What is, what's the fall? A patsy, with his patsy. Oh, uh, Adam Smasher, it's his patsy. I know, I know. This is the... Um, this is the superhero version of your mom being like, you're being punished, so you can't leave the stairs for 30 minutes, and I'm setting a timer on the microwave. I was going to say, this is very much of... Um, what is the old policy of... It was a policy during the Cold War. Man, we're bringing up a lot of stuff that like all these... <laughs> All these college professors are just going to be screaming at us um, where, you know, you would build up nuclear weapons at the same amount as the other side. So mutually assured destruction. Mutually assured destruction. That's what this is. hundred percent. It's because the JSA is like, look, if you step outside those borders, we're going to have to kill you. And Black Adam is like, if I step outside these borders, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so they're like, OK, well, how about no killing? You just stay where you are. Yeah. Black Adam <laughs> is another one of those villains, though, where they seem impossibly powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, considering they have to take on an entire super team because otherwise a one person would not be a threat. Uh, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Okay. So now we're going to finally talk about the great series 52. Oh, I was wondering when we were going to evoke 52. Initially earlier when you were like, one of my favorite series and I was like, oh, it's 52. And then you're like from the eighties. And I was like, ah, I don't know. Uh, So after the events of infinite crisis, Adam was asked, 
to help assist in any way he could to save lives because of five million people died during the events of Infinite Crisis. Uh, and it was agreed during this time that he could leave the borders of Kondok. Afterwards, he retained a stronghold in Kondok and he wanted to establish strength and pride in his country. And he wanted to present Kondok as, you know, a, a great nation to the world. So he opened an embassy in New York City. And on the day of the opening, there was a terrorist attack by a suicide bomber in Kondok. Adam literally disarms the bomber to display to those watching at home what the strength of Kondok can do. Um, he basically just kills the guy. Uh, Black Adam puts together a press conference about a coalition of national powers to go against what he views as a threat. The fact that the United States has too many superpowered people and he calls it the Freedom of Power Treaty. And he establishes the idea that any supervillain threat of any kind should be met with zero tolerance. And he proves this by basically bringing out the villain Taraban in front of the crowd and rips him in half on camera. Now, wow. <laughs> representatives of Intergang, the evil uh, Superman. Evil gangsters. Evil, they're, they're, they're gangsters that are funded by a pop from by space. dark side. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Evil gangsters from space. Yep. Um, <laughs> They come to Kondok and they're like, yo, see, see, we got these fourth world guns. See, we like, we got some, give you some fourth world guns. See, you know, we like your jib. Huh? We like the cut of your jib. Huh? Um, and he goes, why, why do you, why do you seem like, why do you, why do you sound like James Cagney? I do not understand. Also, who is James Cagney? Um, so they offer him two million in African gold and a beautiful young woman named Andriana. Intergang wants to use wow, just casually trafficking women like that. Yes, Jeez. it is very much human trafficking. Beep, 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 beep. They're Intergang, baby. Yeah, Western comics. Intergang wants to use Kondok as a bridge to create a trading route between America and the Middle East for their weapons. I'm just imagining a giant bridge going between mm -hmm. like, and the United States. It takes you like 14 days to drive over. Disgusted <laughs> by this whole matter, Black Adam immediately slaughters all the gangster men for their bad impressions, and he frees. <laughs> <laughs> and he frees Adriana. I need uh, Adam to learn some coping mechanisms, maybe some like tapping or some breathing exercises mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. So Adam provides refugee status to Adriana as her family has been killed. And because both her and her brother were taken into slavery. Eventually, she criticizes Adam for his actions with the Freedom of Power trilogy. And she says that it's a hostile tactic that will ultimately lead the entire world into war. And she suggests with all the, of the needs of the world distracting him that he's ignoring everything that is happening in Kondok. What actually really matters, the people. So Adam begins to trust her. And he begins to start loving her. And he trusts her to be somebody by his side that can change the world for the better. Um, and she starts to fall in love with him. And I need to ask you, Ashley, is she actually, I know you haven't read 52, but like, do you think there's a chance that she actually fell in love with him? No. He, it is a very Beauty and the Beast situation. This is 100% Stockholm. That's is, what I was going to say. Is this, this Stockholm syndrome? This is literally syndrome? textbook Stockholm yeah. syndrome. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Uh, and this is, uh, I, would, I would say, having not read 52, mm -hmm probably borderline emotional abuse mm -hmm. yeah 100 it's a little soon um i also know what happens to her so i understand well the listeners are gonna find out what why we get to the why we do this mm -hmm. i understand narratively why this happens uh do i buy it not for a single second so black adam offers her the scarab that imprisoned his powers mm -hmm. there is a goddess within that scarab that will empower her and adriana accepts and becomes the goddess isis now this is also an outside DC Comics nod. Yeah. And something that I think the movie definitely won't do. And if I'm wrong, whoops, I haven't seen Black Adam at this point. Uh, so just to let you know, Isis is a DC Comics superhero, as well as a separate Egyptian goddess also living inside the DC Comics universe. The superhero character is modeled closely after the main character of a television show, a live action television show called The Secrets of Isis, which was on Saturday mornings starring Joanna Cameron in the 70s, which served as the second half of the Shazam Isis Hour. If you are a uh, Pluto TV user, and you should mm -hmm. be, it's free. Uh, they have a lot of those uh, episodes are streaming. Yeah. So this is a nod to that, yeah. which I think is very fun. I would high key 
love this character to be in the sh- uh, the Black Adam movie. I would be so impressed. I think the rights are. Oh, I yeah. don't. I don't think it's. But yeah. I would mm-hmm. love to. See, I, Isis also, if you're into mythology, is mm-hmm. a really, really cool Egyptian goddess. Yeah. So Isis and Bladam, Black Adam flying past Isis Crete. and Bladam. <laughs> Isis and Bladam. I'm gonna try this again. Here I we ship go. it. <laughs> So Isis and Black Adam flying past trees, K I S S I N G. <laughs> Stop! Let's put that on a t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the two of them go on a conquest to find Adriana's brother. And along the way, they dismantle every slavery ring and every human trafficking site they find. They free children that were taken from their families. And the two say to the world that Kondok be- will open their borders and becomes a home for refugees everywhere. I wish Black Adam had evolved and this was what he did now. This is way more interesting. This is, I will, I'm going to say this right now. Again, I've said this. 52 is one of my favorite comic book series yeah. of all time. 52 yeah, yeah. is um, an amazing exploration through the DC universe. And it is one of Black Adam's best stories. Another feat of uh, editing as well, because mm-hmm. it is a lot of different creators on a lot of mm-hmm. different titles mm-hmm. doing a lot of different things cohesively. Yes. Now, Black Adam eventually proposes to her, offering a jewel that was given to, the, to Cleopatra on the eve of the Alexandria Wall. Isis accepts, and the two are wed by the Marvel family, by Shazam, mm-hmm. a Billy Batson, in front of the public in Kondok. Um cute eventually it turned out that amon her brother Mm -hmm. wasn't in a slave ring he was taken by inner gang ah inner gang she here we are (laughs) i thought we were done with those guys uh to be re-educated we're never done with inner gang that's true uh (laughs) he was taken by inner gang to be re-educated with many other children to serve them and to stop talking like this she (laughs) for dark side she dark side is she he's like give me an egg cream see (laughs) uh eventually he had been tortured Mm. And Amon lost the function in his legs. Couldn't walk anymore. Sure. They basically broke his legs so many times. Adam and Isis arrive to find him near death. And Adam shares a portion of his power to Amon, similarly to what Billy Batson did for Freddie Freeman, a.k.a. Captain Marvel Jr. And now Amon becomes Osiris. And he wears a black costume that is very similar to Black Adam. And he is now the third member of this new Black Marvel family. Isis and Osiris also having um, a mother mm-hmm. and son relationship. So, yeah. so now Adam sort of has humility. He has peace. He has a family. He's got a perfect front lawn that nobody's been screwing with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it seems like the hierarchy of power in the DC universe is pretty stable. Just <laughs> kidding. It's comics. And eventually he has dinner with Venus Savannah. Venus de Milo, the turtle. No, <laughs> uh, that's don't take us down that left turn. Uh, <laughs> Venus Savannah, who is the ex-wife of Dr. Thaddeus Savannah, one of uh, Captain Marvel's big villains. Yeah. Now, one of the doctor's creatures is a large mutant crocodile who breaks loose to attack the dinner. And Osiris manages to calm the creature down and eventually befriends him, naming him Sobek. Also, a newly formed Suicide Squad is sent out to dispose of this newly formed Black Marvel family. And during this, Osiris panics and accidentally kills one of them with his powers because he doesn't know how to control them. Mm -hmm. Osiris is overwhelmed with guilt because of how easily he took a life. And he starts to believe that the powers he was given by Black Adam are cursed. Afterwards, Osiris is talking to Sobek because Sobek, because he's a mutant crocodile monster man, can talk. Yeah, he's got higher brain function. And he's like, Sobek, I feel awful. I feel awful. And he says, I think I should give up these powers. Mm -hmm. So as a sign of penance, he says Black Adam, the name that transforms with, and he reverts back to Amon. Remember, Mm -hmm. the mortal man that is no longer able to walk. Yeah. Um, And here is where one of the most shocking twists of 52 happens. And I want to tell you right now that if you don't want to know what it is, I would fast forward about a minute. Fast forward about two minutes right now, okay? So here we go. Sobek tricked Osiris to turning into Amon. And Sobek revealed himself to be Famine, a.k.a. Yurd the Unknown, a member of four superpowered creatures created by the Science Squad in a large attack by Anagang. She meh, Anagang. And Dr. Savannah, she meh. Um, And Sobek... Eats Amon. Oh my god, I was gonna say that as a joke. <laughs> I was gonna be like, and then he eats him. <laughs> he eats him. Sobek 
eat Saman. Eep. Now, this is after several weeks. You got to realize 52, it's called 52. Weekly series. It's a weekly series. Mm-hmm. Sobek and Amon, I think, are friends for like 15 issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it is a hard turn. Yeah. Um. So he's one of the horsemen. Kondak, over the last four weeks, have been suffering drought, hunger, disease, and pollution, all influenced by the presences of these four members, these four ages of dread, these four horsemen. Uh, pestilence poisons Isis. Um, and Black Adam eventually takes all of them down, except for it takes them all down one by one, all the four horsemen. Um, and he holds his loved one. So he's lost Amon. Isis is poisoned and Isis is dying now. Mm -hmm. And she begs him to avenge their family. And she says that she finally understands why Adam is the way he is in terms of protecting conduct from the outside world, because the world of man is evil and it needs to be extinguished. And she then dies in his arms. Adam goes on a full on rampage. Mm -hmm. The biggest temper tantrum you have ever seen. Mm -hmm. And he starts World War Three in the DC universe. Wow. Um, Like you do, because, you know, that's really what the hero Mm -hmm. of the DC cinematic Mm -hmm. universe. That's what we need. Mm -hmm. That's I think if you know, if I'm sitting here. Uh, on my desk at Warner Brothers, and I say to myself, you know, we need a new hero in the DC Cinematic Universe. How about that guy that started World War III? How about that guy that did a Holocaust? Yes, that guy, that guy. So there's lots of fighting. Adam tortures all the horsemen, and he finds out that this whole attack was by Intergang. Intergang. (laughs) He finds out that Intergang has been hiding in the country of Bialya. Mm Mm-hmm. Another fake DC nation. Mm-hmm. And blinded with grief and anger, he kills every single citizen of Bialya. Wow. Murders them. Oh, so really, no, like commits a Holocaust. He does commit a Holocaust. Yeah. Um, and there's more fighting. Captain Marvel Shazam takes it upon himself that he's like, we are going to transform Black Adam back to his mortal self. Mm-hmm. I don't care what it costs us. We're going to do it. Yeah. With the help of Zatanna, Phantom Stranger, and other magical users, they conjure up a spell to redirect the lightning that when Billy says Shazam, it will change the word that Black Adam has to say so that he cannot turn himself back oh, into yeah, Black yeah, Adam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. it, no matter how much he says, because his magic word is Shazam. Yeah. Uh, Power Girl and Alan Scott fly out and they grab Black Adam and they hold him still while this lightning bolt comes at him. Yeah. And the plan is successful. It hits Black Adam, and he is now turned back into Teth Adam. And he desiccates away into a 5,000-year-old man. (laughs) Uh, After the commotion, though, and in the midst of this battle, remember our good old boy, Adam Smasher? Yeah. Adam Smasher, our good old boy. He comes in, and he manages to grab Teth Adam, his friend, and Mm. he sneaks him away before the heroes can find him. Mm. Um, Eventually, we see that Teth Adam is wandering the Middle East, uh, searching for what we don't know, but he keeps saying various words in hopes to find the new word. Yo, interesting. That can uh, transform him. Um, uh, so Adam Smasher still doesn't betray his friend, which could have some repercussions in the movie plot or not. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen it. Um, now, Ashley, again, Black Adam got a Black Marvel family. Yep. Um, do you like the idea of a Black uh, Marvel family? And are there any are there any other DC villains that you think should get a family like this? Uh, no, I don't like the idea of it. I find it lazy and derivative of Shazam. Um, I like the idea of Isis. Um, I like the idea. I do too. I, I think I, Isis in Black Adam's romance is lovely. I I I like the idea of giving him a piece of goodness in this world. Um, I, I, I just think, I just don't think for black Adam, for me, the family idea works. And the family idea is something that I'm super warm on. Like we did our whole episode on bat family stories. Um, and every story that we talked about there is like some of my favorite comics work ever. I just don't think for me, it's what I would like to see for a villain. And I think particularly with black Adam, um, and particularly from the era and the creators that was coming out, I think it's kind of a, I think it's kind of a lazy choice. Mm-hmm. That's all. 
Okay. So after the events of World War III, Teth goes through extraordinary lengths to try to resurrect ISIS. Um, he has a cadre of loyal countrymen. Good word, cadre. Um, and they sneak him back into Kandak so he can recover the bones of ISIS, all in the effort to bring them to a Lazarus pit. Ashley, mm. what's a Lazarus pit? A Lazarus pit is a bubbling hole in the ground in the DC universe full of magic, and you huck a dead body into it, and they come back to life. Unfortunately, uh, during the recovery, and as what happens when you have a pile of bones, uh, he accidentally left behind her ring finger, and because her remains are complete, she can't be revived. Um, and how could they be married? Mm -hmm. The alternate is, is that because he doesn't have the complete set, he'll have to use some sort of magical amulet to restore her, but it's gone missing. So Teth ventures into the Tower of Fate, a home of Dr. Fate in hopes of finding the missing artifact. And there he encounters an imprisoned Felix Faust, who is sort of a sorcerer in the DC universe. Mm -hmm. Faust informs Teth that the amulet has been broken into several pieces and scattered across the globe thanks to Mary Marvel and Captain Marvel Jr. And in hopes of using Isis to free himself from the Tower of Fate, Faust agrees to help Teth find the missing pieces. Faust uses the magical residue from Isis' bones and is able to transform Teth back into Black Adam using Isis's name as the magic word. The drawback is that Adam is now leeching off of her magic and it will drain whatever is left of her essence for as long as he remains as Black Adam. And if it's depleted completely, her resurrection will be impossible. Mm, null and void. Yeah. Uh, so, here we have something to talk about here, Ashley, and that okay. is... Who do you think has the final piece of Isis? And, you know, I think it's going to, it's kind of obvious, but I'm going to ask you, and we're going to find out who that is in just a second. Now, Ashley, we have a missing piece of Isis. We need Isis's ring to resurrect Isis. Who do you think has it? Billy Batson. No. Our good old boy, Adam Smasher. <laughs> Yeah, so he gives Black Adam Isis's ring. Mm -hmm. uh, Black Adam is newly restored as Black Adam. He returns to the Tower of Fate. He uses the lightning to restore the pieces of the Amulet to one, and Faust conjures up a sphere that is Isis's life force. Um, the idea is to drop the Amulet inside to restore her. The resurrection fails. Um, <laughs> and fueled with rage, Black Adam is ready to kill Faust. Faust places the blame on Adam, reminding him of the consequences of depleting her magical residue. He's like, you've used too much of it. I can't, I, there's not enough to bring her back. Um, Adam, overwhelmed with anger and grief, leaves the Tower of Fate. Yep. After Faust is left alone, he congratulates himself on a job well done because he deceived Adam. Well, and that's very Faustian, right? Because, the deal with the devil. Yes. The corpse that was in front of them all along was one that belonged to Ralph Dibney, the elongated man, a character who died inside the Tower of Fate during the series 52. Mm -hmm. uh, the real remains of Isis have been hidden, and the spell that Faust was casting was a smoke show, and he actually successfully restores Isis. However, she is under Faust's control. And using her magic... Faust is able to leave the Tower of Fate, which was his prison. Now, despite being under his control, Isis manages to send messages to Black Adam in the form of Isis flowers, creating a trail back to Faust. Adam, doing what he does best, threatens to murder Faust yep. if he doesn't release Isis from his mind control. Isis returns. But she has become bitter and jaded, and she hates humanity now. Shocked. But Shocked, the, I say. But the people of Kondok rejoice to see Adam and Isis together. And Isis finds it fitting to sacrifice their loyal followers as they are tainted by this world and they must be re reborn anew. Adam tries to stop her. He can't. And so he calls in the JSA to help. Jay Garrick finds... Uh, Eventually, during this adventure, Jay Garrick, the original Golden Age Flash, finds the Wizard Shazam frozen in a statue located in the Rock of Finale. And he brings this statue to Kondok. Jay and Adam Smasher, his good old pal, mm -hmm. try to convince Black Adam to bring forth the lightning to restore the wizard. Because they're like, this is the only way we can fix the situation. Yeah. Adam is reluctant, but he is forced to recognize that the chaos his power has caused and what it has done to his wife. Um, he finally succumbs, says the magic word, and the wizard immediately rectifies the whole deal. But the wizard, he's pretty cantankerous. He's kind of mad. 
And he's like, you know what? Humans, you can't be trusted. He takes away Black Adam's powers, takes away Mary Marvel's powers, takes Billy, Billy Botson's powers, and he takes away Isis's power. He's like, give it all back. What did Mary do? Uh, well, Mary at this point has been bad about three or four times. I just get past that. No, Mary. Yeah. I love her. Teth and Adriana see each other as mortals. They run towards each other, but before they can embrace, the wizard turns them into statues as a punishment for abusing the power of Shazam, leaving them in place in Kondok for eternity. Um, now, during the later, the storyline Blackest Night, where a bunch of characters got resurrected in DC Universe became zombies. Yep. Osiris, remember Osiris, yes. Adriano's brother? She, he was one of the characters that was resurrected. And he returns to Kondok and vows to restore the kingdom to its former glory. And he decides to just preserve the statues of Teth and Adriana, hoping that one day that he can bring them back. But before he can bring them back, we get to the new 52. Yay. What is that, Ashley? Uh, first, I just want to say, if you want to hear more on Blackest Night, you can hear uh, protracted versions of our Blackest Night Club. If you go back in the feed. Uh, new 52 is uh, Barry Allen, Mrs. Mom. He ran back in time. He reset the whole DC universe, except for Batman and whatever Jeff Johns was writing. Everybody got more lines on their costumes. Mm -hmm. Now, like everything else in the DC universe, Black Adam basically gets a clean slate. Yeah. His origin is similar, but there's some minor differences. In this era... Adam and his nephew Amon were in slavery. One day, Amon is chosen to be the new champion for the wizard Shazam, and Amon wants to use his powers for good, healing the wounds of his uncle and wanting to use it on anyone that may need it, including their slave masters, in the hope that it would spark a sense of humanity in their souls. But Adam craved vengeance. He craved a change in the hierarchy of power in the DC universe. So when Adam <laughs> called down the lightning, Adam, excuse me, so many names there to similar. It's okay. When a mon called down the lightning, mm -hmm. Adam pushed him out of the way and got zapped by it, becoming Black Adam. The fate of Amon has sort of been murky since this point and has not been directly revealed. I'm going to assume that he was killed. I am going to suspect that this is going to be very close to the origin that we are offered in the Black Adam movie with the, with his quote unquote son. I agree. With that little boy that and we it, see. And, and, and again, we're not, we haven't seen it at this no, point. No, we haven't so, seen it. So stop. I no spoilers, just predictions. Look, I don't care about your comments and, and the bottom of this. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> so, Adam craves vengeance. He chain, He craves a change in the hierarchy of power of the DC <laughs> universe. Um, eventually, when facing off against Captain Marvel Shazam in this new iteration, Black Adam dies similarly to his first appearance in the original Fawcett comics. He is tricked into saying the magic word and he rapidly ages, turning to dust. But he is eventually resurrected during the forever evil storyline because of comics. And then later in Jeff John's Doomsday Clock, the sequel to Watchmen, sort of, Black Adam takes advantage of this thing called the Superman theory, which is a theory that conspires that the U.S. government created metahumans in an effort to assert their power, thus creating a metahuman arms race with other countries. Black Adam holds Kondok as sanctuary for all metahumans, but most notably villains like Giganta, Killer Frost, and Doc Dredd. And currently, during this era of Infant Frontier, Black Adam has joined the Just League, and that is where we are going to leave it with Black Adam. Woo! Uh, and, you know, his movie is right around the corner go enjoy it or in theaters right now or you've seen it like 55 times and you've enjoyed the changes hierarchies and powers so if you have cool i love it <laughs> let's go to recommended reading ashley what's that that is where if you go to geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading you can click on any of these recommendations that jason makes for you you can get them in your format of choice and a little bit of your uh, purchase goes back to support us here making geek history lesson what do you got for us today jason uh the first one is black adam the dark age uh it is um basically it is a new version of sort of Black Adams. This is where Teth Adams on a quest to find the magical word that will restore him to Black Adam. It's a lot about his love for Isis. It's really good. Cool. Um, Black Adam Rise and Fall of an Empire. Great title. Is basically all the pages from 52 that are only the Black Adam story. Which they have sort of... I think that's clever because also we've recommended 52 about 100,000 yeah. times. But this gets rid of... It, I, when you look at it, collect stories from... Is it 52? 1 to 3? 6 to 10? 12? It, yeah, yeah, it is, yeah, It is Black it's, Adam's storyline. Streamlined version Str of it. A streamlined version, which I think is very smart, especially when the movie's coming out. For sure. And then Black Adam, JSA, Black Rain. This is the JSA storyline where they take over Kondok. Yes, yeah, a good story. This is like the story that I think cemented Black Adam as a big person in the DC universe. Uh, so there you go. 
go check those out. Go get some recommended reading. And Ashley, let's get to the honor roll. Yeah, that is where if you go over to Apple Podcasts and you leave us a five-star review, we will read whatever you write. And if you're a nice international listener, please take a screenshot and email it to geekhistorylesson at gmail.com because we can't see your Apple Podcasts and let us know where you're from because we want to celebrate you too. So today we are welcoming one person to the teacher's lounge and that is Abber's man who says, woo I just want to say you two are awesome. I stumbled across GHL in early 2021 when I started having long commutes every day. And wow, your lessons and recommended reading are great gateways and have helped me unlock the mystery of my favorite comic characters. Loki, Thor, Spider-Man, Batman, and most importantly, Robin slash Nightwing. Thanks for having so much content that I could basically marathon over the last year and a half. On to Patreon. Keep being awesome, Clea and Stevie. Well, thank you. Thank We're, you, Abbers man. I'm glad you're able to marathon that. And welcome into the teacher's lounge where Teth Adam is teaching the art of strangulation. Wow. Frightening. Yeah, you have to just get a waiver sign before you can get in the mm-hmm. class because there is a oh, chance. Oh, like those haunted houses? Yeah, there is a chance he will actually kill you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. It's just, hey, but if you want to learn the way to do it, this is the way to do it. So there you go. Uh, don't forget to follow and subscribe and download this podcast wherever you can find all good podcasts. We're on every app that you can think of. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please tell your friends about it. it's the best way to grow this podcast uh ashley where can they find ghl on social media you can find us at geekhistorylesson.com if you put a slash blog on the end there you get additional written content every thursday you can also find us at facebook.com slash geek history lesson on twitter at ghl podcast and on instagram at geek history lesson you can find ashley on twitter and instagram at ashley v robinson you can find me on twitter and instagram at Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N. And don't forget to check out our Black Mirror villain episode over at patreon.com slash Jawin. Now it's time for... Stick around. Ashley, would you watch a Black Adam versus Superman movie? I asked this question Mm. because this has been a movie that has been teased for a very long time. Would Would you want to see this movie? I mean, that's what I thought this movie was going to be until the trailer started coming mm-hmm. out. And so we knew that Henry Cavill wasn't going to be part of it. This is what I think this movie should be. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is what I think maybe Justice League <laughs> should have been. Um, yeah, I'd watch that in a heartbeat, honestly. Uh, it sounds it sounds, it sounds sounds great, and it's comprehensive in a way that, um, at least at the time of this recording, I, I don't know what the Black Adam movie is going to be. Let's let's not talk about it that much then. No, exactly. Uh, But if you tell me that it's Black Adam versus Superman, I'm like, one, great title. Mm -hmm. Uh, And two, I know immediately what that is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd watch it. Would you? Hell yeah. Yeah. Now here's the real question. Do you think it'll happen? No, because I don't think Henry Cavill's Superman anymore. I think so. I don't think so either. I don't think it's going to happen. I I think we're more likely to get a Shazam versus Black Adam. And I will just say that in the current standing of the DC universe, I'm less interested in that than if it was Superman. I'm going to say this. I don't even know if we're going to get a Shazam 2 or I mean, excuse me, a Black Adam 2. I don't know. It took us six years to get a Black Adam from the announcement. It took us 10. Uh, No, because we were doing Geek History Lesson when Dwayne was announced. Well, I don't remember. I just saw recently there was a post where Dwayne Johnson said, it's been 10 years, and then he posted the trailer. Uh, Yeah, I'm just saying from when the announcement was made public. So, like, yeah, yeah, it is taking, I don't don't know. I mean, it'll it'll depend a lot on the success of the movie, ultimately, on how much money it makes. (laughs) I can't wait for future listeners to tell us wrong, how wrong we are, or how right we are. That's one of our favorite parts. It's fine, yeah. When we were making these predictions, so there you go. All right, thank you so much for listening to Geek History Lesson. I am Jason uh theo inman i am ashley victoria robinson and professor jason would you please dismiss the class yeah she it's in a gang here she we're taking over the podcast she and that means your podcast is over she that's what in a gang does she yeah